I wanted to change my life. And I think most people that are miserable or that are that are really like dying to be great and dying to have more, we want to change. We want to live a better life. We want to create more for our families. We want to be happier. The the desire is there. Again, it's about how do you go from knowledge to action. So the first thing in this story that's important is realizing that the answer was in me. And my mind was telling me, pay attention. It's your job to push yourself. All performance, all improvement in personal performance begins with an improvement in your self-concept. All improvement in personal performance in what you do on the outside begins with an improvement in your self-concept in your beliefs about yourself. You change your beliefs about yourself on the inside, you change the reality of your life on the outside. When you first say these new affirmations, they won't feel real because they're butting up against the existing affirmations that are already hardwired in your brain. So what we have to remind ourselves is the way I got here is through the affirmations that were stated unconsciously. When I was homeless back in the 70s in Dallas and struggling, my affirmations were negations. It's like nothing's working out for me. It's me against the world. I felt totally alone. I was angry. And everything I repeated were affirmations of self-destruction. But I didn't know it. When we introduce new affirmations, we're going to feel like, oh, I'm just lying to myself. Of course you're lying to yourself. You're starting a new self-creation at this very point in time. As you keep repeating it, you'll get more comfortable with it. It'll rewire your, your brain and it'll start to become the new truth. It'll become second nature to you to the point where you don't think about it anymore because now you have a new mindset. How did you get it? By by creating a new habit, the habit of positive affirmations. And so as you begin to look at where you want to go, beginning to embrace that, it's possible. I'm blessed and highly favored. I've got a lot going for me. I've got some good stuff in me. And it's possible that I can bring my greatness out here in the universe, that I can do what I want to do. It's possible I can write my own book. I can have my own business. I, I can take the trip and travel around the world. It's possible. I can bounce back from adversity and reinvent my life. It's possible. Regardless of where I am, the things can get better for me. It's possible. Most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. In other words, thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So most people have experiences in their life that brand them emotionally. They feel fear, they feel anger, they feel bitterness, they feel frustration, they feel insecurity. And those emotions then become part of their identity. So once they think certain thoughts that turn on certain circuits in their brain that are equal to their insecurity, and then they feel insecure, the moment they feel insecure, they think more insecure thoughts, which makes more chemicals for them to feel insecure. And the repetition of that cycle over time conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of insecurity. So then the person says, I am insecure. And whenever you say, I am anything, you're commanding your mind and body towards a destiny. So then most people's biology is, for the most part, their past. And so if you're not being defined by the vision of the future, some new possibility in your life, you're only left with the old circuitry in your brain and the old emotions of the past. So the question then is, can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, that you've thought about enough times in your mind, that your brain is literally changed to look like the experience has already occurred. Now the latest research in neuroscience says you can change your brain just by thinking. So then as you begin to think about a new possibility and your brain begins to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations, and you begin to plan your behaviors, and you begin to review in your mind, mentally rehearse who you're going to be in your life, 
the mere action of mental rehearsal begins to install the neurological circuits in your brain. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's in fact a map to the future. And if you were then to begin to emotionally embrace your future before it's made manifest, in other words, you're not waiting for your healing to feel wholeness. You're not waiting for your new relationship to feel love. You're not waiting for the mystical moment to feel awe. You're not waiting for your success to feel empowered. That's the old model of reality of cause and effect. Here's a big source of inspiration. Beginning, getting started. Actually turning thought and the notes on the paper, the plans, actually now committing it to action, getting started. And beginning can be an incredible source of inspiration. Guess what you can say when you begin a change in your diet? Guess what you can say? I'm on a new track. I have carved out for myself a new beginning. I'm on my way to the most incredible health. I will never be the same again. I'm leaving the old, undisciplined part of me. I'm leaving that behind. I'm a new person. I'm taking my first shake. I'm swallowing the first tablets. I made my first walk around the block that I'd thought about for so long and never did. I finally did it today. I've started. I have begun. That is an incredible source of inspiration. And that is to start, to begin. You cannot believe what can happen to your self-esteem. And many of you have already experienced it. I'm just asking you to begin something new in all the areas of your life. Maybe you've always thought about benevolence and you just haven't gotten started or you haven't made the plans or you haven't made the decision. I'm asking you to start taking that stuff now that's in your head, that imagination, which is very powerful and, and it's a great source of inspiration in itself. But then I'm asking you then to decide, use that inspiration. Then I'm asking you to make plans, begin to make plans, use that inspiration. And then if you take that first step, it can be the first step of an incredible journey. Ralph Waldo Emerson believed that anyone who had put their heart and soul into their work and had done their very best could hold their head up high. Merely talking about it or only putting in a modicum of effort wasn't good enough in his mind. It was all or nothing. He believed that doing your best was an admirable quality and that although you might not always be successful, knowing that you had done all you could was often all that mattered. At least you could look yourself in the eye. This ethos is central to many youth movements, such as the Scouts and Guides, and is a great philosophy of the life in general. Indeed, doing your absolute best in everything you do is something that we should all aspire to, and it doesn't matter if it's at school, university, work or home. If you think about it, doing your best is also central to self-reliance because it allows you not only to test your capabilities, but also helps you to learn and therefore extend them. It's only when you are at the edge of your ability that you can really test your mettle and see just how much you can depend on yourself. Only ever working inside your comfort zone or doing just enough to get by may be easy but is rarely rewarding. And it never allows you to develop into a fully rounded person or realize your full potential. One thing we can take away from our time at school is the way in which we were appraised. Although achievement was important, so was effort. And it was this that measured just how much of our heart and soul we put into our studies. We may not always have got the grades we wanted, but it showed that we had tried. I, for one, always knew what mattered when my report came home. Effort, it's a shame we don't have a similar measurement system at work, as this would allow organizations to identify the true stars who put their heart and soul into their work, and who therefore want the company to succeed. When you are working on your next task, give it your full concentration and really put the effort in to produce the best possible end result. Even if it doesn't lead to glittering success, you should be proud of yourself for doing your very best. No man fails who does his best.